Hey guys, welcome to a short vlog. I'm just packing for Coachella. You can see in the background, but the place is a bit of a mess. I figured I would take you along for the ride. One of my favorite ways to see how clothes look on me is to film myself in them, see the clothes from different angles, see how they move. There's definitely a stigma with going to Coachella. Like oh, certainly there's a portion of the crowd that's there to like see and be seen but really you can totally just go and have a really chill experience, take in the palm trees, the beautiful weather, see some amazing music and discover some acts you haven't seen before. And there is an element of style and I really like that. For me personally, as someone who's a little bit more reserved in my real life, I love going to festivals and concerts because that's when I really step outside that box and I'm able to feel more authentically myself and more free by pushing the boundaries. When John and I dress up for Coachella, it's not to look like cool or hot or anything like that. We just like to have fun with it. So no judgment on any of this stuff. This is just me having a good time. And honestly at Coachella, the influencer crowd makes it really great for people watching. I have no idea how I'm gonna style any of these, but Let's try everything on. First up is a little nod to Pam Anderson. This was uh, an Etsy recreation of an old shirt she wore in an iconic photo. I just finished watching Pam and Tommy on Hulu. Holy shit, very sad show. But I love this outfit with the vegan leather pants from Abercrombie and my Converse, but it's a little bit too casual and too comfortable. Um, that's something I would just like wear to a bar. So I think I'm gonna skip this one, although it is my comfort zone, crop top and high-waisted pants. This was a really fun sparkly shirt from Revolve, but it is so cropped that I can't even wear a strapless bra with it. And I'm all about comfort these days. You know, I'm in my 30s and I would have to wear it without a bra. It's a metal material. It's just too uncomfortable. Um, so I'm gonna skip this one, even though it's really fun and really festive. It's just not flattering enough, not comfortable. But this is an Adidas and Stella McCartney tracksuit I paired with my Teddy Blake Stella nine inch orange bag. I'm obsessed with this. It's Florida Retiree meets Sporty Spice, which is how I want to be at all times. I also paired it with this um, halter top from Abercrombie. Not sure if I'll go with that or like a little bandeau, but I was feeling it. Uh, I think I'll wear this today on Friday. And then wanted to give Teddy Blake a shout. They sent this to me in PR. I just love their minimal branding, especially this Stella 9 inch is my favorite. Their bags come in so many different colors. They're always on top of the latest trends. This is not sponsored. Um, I just really like their company and I love this pop-up color. I think I wanna get the pink one too. And I paired it with my leather lugged boots from Converse. Super cute. Then Sunday's outfit is this slightly more like punky vibe. It's uh, high-waisted trousers from Nasty Gal, little crop top from Revolve and layered necklaces from Revolve. The jacket is from Nasty Gal too. Little crop top and high-waisted pants. That's my comfort zone. It's not super stylish, but this is very much me. This is something I would wear anytime, any concert, any city, doesn't matter. So definitely gonna go with this one. This was a little Y2K kind of Baby Spice inspired outfit. I feel like all of these are just like subtle nods to the Spice Girls. <laughs> um, and it's cute. I like the pieces, but it's just not so much me. These are like very young. Um, so I think I'm gonna skip the dress and these little mesh shirts. Another Pam Anderson tribute. This is an Etsy shirt from her uh, Barbed Wire movie. And I don't know, I just thought it could be cute with this leather skirt, but I don't like how the skirt is bunching around my hips. Um, I do like the vest from Nasty Gal. And if I wore the shirt, I would probably like cut the bottom or wrap it like that or cut the sleeves. It's cute, but it's just nothing special to me. This isn't particularly super fun, but I just wanted to try on a bunch of different things. And I always have jacket options because the desert gets really cold at night, even though it's 90s during the day. This is another favorite. It's a straight leg version of the Abercrombie leather pants and a little crop top, um, but it's all about this sequin country shirt from Nasty Gal. I want to live in this shit. Bury me in this shirt. It's so fun. I think I should probably wear this to Arcade Fire today, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. It's very Arcade Fire. Um, yeah, this is my comfort zone. High-waisted pants, crop top, some kind of bold accessory, you know, like the shirt. I just think it's super fun. It's comfortable. I can move around in it. It's just better for nighttime. Then I have some vacation outfits. Totally forget where I got this <laughs> jumpsuit, but the hat's Aritzia, and I love these leather platform sandals from Beak because they're so comfortable. Gotta protect your face from the sun in the desert. I have another uh, jumpsuit from Revolve and it's super comfortable and cute, casual. And the hat is a straw fedora from Lack of Color. 
definitely one of my favorites for just chilling around the pool, running errands. Um, we're going to be going to the Soho House party. So I got this Reformation Rika two-piece set with these Raya heels from Revolve, just a slightly less casual option. I also have this like pastel sweater from Revolve just for hanging. My favorite vacation outfit. This is like leisure bitch on vacation. She's by the pool. She's, you know, getting her nails done, drinking a pina colada. I love this. This is so me. Definitely gonna wear this at some point. Please let me know in the comments below, what's your favorite outfit or your favorite piece? How would you style these? Obviously I haven't even thought about sunglasses, jewelry, accessories, hats, bags, all of that. I just kind of wanted to see how this stuff looked on camera, what I might want to return, what I might wear, yada, yada, yada. While we're here, let's just do a little overview of the makeup that I packed. Obviously this video was entirely unplanned. I don't have my tripod, camera, microphone, or lighting equipment. So think of it like an old school YouTube video, right? We're gonna go with that. Obviously I went hard on the blushes. I'm a blush girl, you know how it is. And a lot of these look the same. Don't judge me, enable me. First call out, I did get Flirtatious from Pat McGrath during the Sephora sale. I love it, everybody's right, it's amazing. Anytime I have bronze skin, I like to do MAC Heat Index because it just looks so glowy. It's this gorgeous coral. My sunburnt cheek is the Bare Minerals Blonzer in Kiss of Rose, which they finally brought back. My favorite everyday blush is M Cosmetics Venetian Rose, so I definitely wanted to have that because it also doubles as a highlighter. Probably didn't need MAC Blush Please, but it's also an everyday favorite, and I had room in my makeup bag, so I said, fuck it, let's do it. Had to have my Persona Bubble Blush. I love that pop of pink. For any of my like Y2K outfits, I'll probably wear this one. Hourglass Sublime Flush also travels with me everywhere. It's the kind of blush I really throw on daytime, nighttime, whenever. Just this gorgeous flush of cool toned pink, but the base of the pink is a lot peachier than something like Bubble. Um, and I like that this also doubles as a highlighter. And lastly, my beloved MAC Blurred Buff is just like an elevated bronzer. So honestly, for me, this is reasonable. No surprises here. My discontinued Makeup Forever Foundation, L'Oreal Brow Wiz, Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter is the only um, highlighter I brought. For pimples, I've got the Makeup Forever Full Cover Concealer. I'm coming off of hormonal birth control right now. And when I have my period, my acne is out of control. So this is necessary. I picked this up during the Sephora sale. It's the Dior Forever Concealer in 1CR. It's my perfect shade match for my face. Sadly, this creases like a bitch under my eyes. It, it, it just like slides right over any lines. It will not stick to any kind of texture on my face. So I love it as kind of an all over the skin foundation. Um, much like I use my ColourPop Pretty Fresh Concealer for, but under my eyes, this is not working out very well. And then of course, for under my eyes, Fit Glow C2.5, she busted. Got one powder, Charlotte Tilbury in Fair. One bronzer, my new Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt in Light. One mascara, which is Thrive. Let's do the fun section. So for a lot of these, I wanna do little rhinestones, you know, in the corners of my eyes, patterns, fun things like that. I just love experimenting with rhinestones. I'm definitely gonna recreate the Hailey Bieber makeup tutorial that I just posted. So I'm bringing my Victoria Beckham liner in cocoa and bronze too for the waterline NYX Deepest Brown. Then I just have some fun colors, you know, for some of my Y2K looks, maybe I would do these pastel colors as a wing or maybe like a multicolored wing, that could be fun. My favorite glitter is Violet Voss, and it doesn't have a shade name, but it looks like this. I bought this and I've never worn it, sadly. It's the Makeup by Mario palette. It's called Master Metallics, and I just kind of thought that that pink at the top would be really fun. But more likely, I'll just be going for M Cosmetics Da Vinci every day. Sorry that none of the colors are true to life right now. It's dark and I'm using overhead lighting, but it is what it is. I cannot travel without this palette. I have my Shiseido eyelash curler. One of the best glitters is LA Girl Holographic. Do you see that blue reflect? Oof, it's nice. I've got my Dior Beige Mitza. For some pops of color, I've got ColourPop Rem and ColourPop Special Delivery. I've also got Bodyography Blue Morpho. For smoky eyes, I have MAC Amorous Alloy and Woodwinked. I always bring Hourglass Ray because it's truly like my favorite nighttime eyeshadow. 
My favorite daytime eyeshadow is L'Oreal Amber Rush. Always travel with this. And one of my favorite kind of bronzy glitter one and done shadows is ColourPop, a little quirky. Lastly, we've got lips. Let me try to organize these. Okay, I organized the lip colors into different categories. New products, uh, oops, went a little hard. Browns, kind of sheer, my lips but better colors, nudes, and pinks. Honestly, I had to pack in quite a hurry, so that's why I have a lot here. I just didn't want to have to think about it, so I threw everything in my bags. I have the Fit Glow Lip Serums in Full, T, and Halo, because they're so similar, but some of them are a little different. Full is a little darker, more of a chocolate brown. T is a little bit lighter, and then Halo is a little more gray. So those are the sort of browns. I have Sheer Lips right here. Rowan Charlie is my favorite. I'm almost out. It's the perfect My Lips But Better shade. I also have Enchanting Kiss and Pillow Talk from Charlotte Tilbury. Pillow Talk is like one of my favorite lip products of all time, and I love this formula. Had to bring my beloved Fit Glow Lip Serum in Beach Glow. It's just that perfect, barely there wash of copper. And then the Beauty Pie Collagen Lip Oil and Jammy for just a sheer flush of a berry tint. The two nudes I brought are Rowan Remy, which is more of like a warm nude, and then Chantecai Patience, which is a little bit lighter, definitely a little bit more opaque. So I like having two paler nude lip options. These are all the pinks. Realistically, what I'd wear to the festival is some of these. Definitely the Naturium because it's so nourishing, looks really flattering on the lips, fills in the lip lines. So it's both a lip color and a bomb. I ordered something from Fit Glow in their skincare range and I ended up getting uh, the lip serum and gospel as a sample and that happens to be one of my favorite shades. So I'll probably keep that in my purse. I brought Glossier's Ultra Lip and uh, Lucite as like a fun, very, very light pink option if I wanted to do something like, like baby spice kind of makeup. But honestly, I'm crushing so hard on Fawn Beauty right now that this shade Sugar Plum Princess, it's like this light pink with sparkles. Oh, I'm loving that. And they also have this amazing shade Sweater Weather. That's like the perfect sort of my lips but better pink. And for when we're going out to dinner, I really like having Lawless's Forget the Filler Gloss in Velvet. It's this gorgeous pink shade. The formula is so flattering on the lips, but it's not the most nourishing formula. So I wouldn't take it with me to the festival. It's more like going out to dinner. Um, if you didn't follow me on Instagram, Thumper went to the emergency room and it was a whole thing. We thought he was dying and it was this big drama. He's okay now, he's recovering, but I um, treated myself to a little retail therapy. At Sephora, I got the Rose Ink lipstick in Enig... <laughs> I can't talk. Enigmatic, which is this really nice rosy terracotta. Obviously all the new stuff I will show you when I'm back home and all my proper lighting. I thought this was gonna have that rose vanilla scent they talked about, but it really just smells like vanilla to me. Not the best vanilla, because I don't like that it's floral. The rose is so subtle that it doesn't really bother me. Then I have Merit Slip and Merit Lavenue. So if you wanna see swatches of any of these lipsticks, go to my Instagram page. I've saved all of the try-ons to a highlight, so you can check them out. My newest obsession is the NARS Soft Matte what is it called? Soft Matte Tinted Lip Balm. This is in Brief Encounter. I have a lot of nude lipsticks and nude lip glosses, but I don't have any that are really brown in the lipstick form. And this just feels so incredibly comfortable and smells like vanilla. Oh man, I love this. I love this. I can't believe it took me so long to try it. On Ulta, I got this Flower Beauty lipstick in Blossom. It's just like nice mauve brown. It might be a little too dark or a little too mauve for me. I'm not sure, but I'll try it on in better lighting. My latest obsession is the Chantecai Lip Chic in Ceylon, which is the perfect reddish brown. When you just apply it sheerly on the lips, it's, oh my God, it's like the best 90s lip. And I forgot, I did buy one bold color as well. This is Chantecai Wild Poppy. Oof. And what I wanted to do, I thought one of the days it would be fun to wear Wild Poppy with Max Heat Index and then like just a wash of like bronze or maybe just glitter or rhinestones on the eyes. So objectively, that's a lot of makeup, <laughs> but it's an 11 day trip in three different places. And so I had a lot of needs. I didn't really know what I needed. I was in a time crunch. So I just threw everything in the bag. We'll see what I end up wearing. I will probably end up wearing barely any of this. I don't wear foundation at the festival. Like I just do a little bit of concealer, barely anything on my skin. Cause when you're at a festival, 
it's hot. It has to last a long time. You don't want things getting sweaty sliding around your face. So I focus on the eyes and then something nourishing on the lips. I feel so silly and ridiculous for filming that video. I'm so uncomfortable <laughs> like in style videos and showing off clothes and showing off my body. Uh, so be gentle with me, please. And if you made it this far, thanks for watching. I hope you're all having a great week and I'll see you in the next one.